think about like, especially in the beginning. Hey, Nina, which Nina is this? Nina Olenberg, right? No, it's Zala. Nina Zala. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, were you here? I thought you joined us last yesterday. I but, yeah. yeah, I want to listen again. Okay, cool, sure. Okay, um, so um, with um, now I forgot my brain site literally so bad. So um, be, we need to be more specific. We need to talk about um, think about what sort of revenue generating activities can you engage in, especially during the first initial phase. Because most of you, when you're working on your collection, when you're working for your own brand, apart from marketing activities, apart from the initial stage, developing collections, that's all activities that require you to put in a lot of investment, like capital investment, like money, overhead, studio setup, machinery, also your time, your labor. But in addition to, obviously, it's all an investment stage. Are there any activities that you could do on the side to generate income? If you mentioned that, um, doing a sideline, like a part-time job, maybe like say a job in retail, that will be obviously ben beneficial or a job in um, perhaps for a design firm, like assistant um, or design job. Or um, if you're really good at sewing, maybe you could do say your studio can do um, production works for other, I don't know, other brands or whatsoever, just in small volumes. So whatever activities, if you're really good with illustrations and drawings, like artworks, creating prints, maybe you're, you might want to develop a um, derivative line of products. So it's like maybe it's little crafts or accessories, earrings, whatsoever, accessories that or bags with your own print on it. So small things that you can actually use activities you can do that may you know bring in some income in that early stage and in terms of profit um so i'll share my screen now can you also my screen yep okay so if you go into modules Um, the legal aspects for your next section, legal aspects and um, the financial aspects are the two main things. We spoke about um, trademarks way back um, in first year or so, but I think for us fashion, it's more about looking at if you're uh, launching a fashion brand or whatever brand your business, whatever products you do, um, what sort of IP laws you need to make sure that you are covered with like if you're launching your own brand it's good that you want to you, you want to talk about like um registering a trademark for your name for your brand you may want to register your logo um if you want to launch overseas you you think of expanding your market at any stage you might want to then look into what other um trademark law applies to the target destination um and think about obviously like what um i would recommend everyone would register like an abn like a business like apart from an abn business number because even as a sole trader i think you get an abn as well but if you actually register a company whatsoever obviously there's a lot of money involved in registering and maintaining a company but with a company it's a separate entity to you as an individual so if the company goes down and doesn't make any money, it goes down. Like it doesn't affect you as an individual. But if you're a sole trader and you, I don't know, to come, you what you're do, doing, your activities don't succeed, you are personally liable for whatever loss. So look into those as aspects. Like obviously you probably need like tax file numbers, um, ABN. So they, those sort of things that whatever that's relevant to you. Um, with the financial aspects, if we actually go in, that's the main one I want you to all have a look about. Like, so what sort of funding options do, can you find? Like, is it going to be self-funded? Um, whatever activity you do, is there scope for the government? Any government funding available for you to access? Um, like, Victorian government has quite a lot you um, fundings for the arts and culture sector 
um, Brisbane, I mean, Queensland government, quite limited. Um, all you need to do is decide, like, because it's only a 1500 word limit. All you need to do is really just identify, okay, this particular funding will be applicable whatsoever. Um, and you're going to get an investor. So venture funding, crowdsourcing, is it going to be like a really exciting new product that you're going to do almost like a Kickstarter uh, funding online? Self-funding, or is it, is it going to be um, your family funding you, families and friends? And if they're funding you, what do they get in return? Like, do they get a share of your business? Or do they get, like, I don't know, percentage returns? Like, think about that. And when it comes to financial reporting, so balance sheets, profit and loss, try to estimate, because I think um, one of the questions from yesterday was that a lot of you, if you're basing your idea around your collection, you may have not have exact price of your products yet. And if you have multiple products, like a collection, it's hard to say, I'm selling this jacket for $579. So it's okay. I think what you guys do, if you, you're selling your collection, identify the category. So um, jackets and coats, um, tops or shirts and blouses, mm, bottoms like pants whatsoever, and then provide a um, price range. And that price range, you would need to then look at your competitor and then look at, then compare it against your, like what's available on the market and then examine their product value, all these, and then look at yours and then make a decision. Because like I I was mentioning like Louis Vuitton, I mean, Chanel sells their jacket for $7,000, handmade, whatever, bespoke. So you know that you can make something pretty like, pretty good quality as well. Like pretty fancy, like a really fancy designer tweed jacket. But you're not going to, obviously, it's not Chanel, but it's going to be like really, it's on par design wise um, with the Chanel, Chanel tweed jacket. So, what you might do is, like, okay, obviously, I'm not going to, from a price perspective, I can't price mine at $7,000 because I don't have that brand value, added value. But what I can do is offering an alternative. Is that a cheaper alternative, a better design version, um, whatsoever? So, think about your product compared to what's available in the market. And then come up with a pricing strategy, a pricing um, list or t- table for your products. So a price range. But please don't do something like, oh yeah, my things will sell from 500 to 1500. B, I think trying to keep keep your category so you can have not so much, not so big a gap because it's really hard to like. So are you selling for 500 or 1500? So you may want to get okay, coats. That's sort of the price range from twelve hundred to fifteen hundred. Um, shirts, three hundred to four hundred. So keep the um, price range relatively control, like specific, um, rather than something vague, a really broad um, spectrum. So that's that. And then in terms of your profit and loss, it's all about. I think you guys predicting sales, predict your sales. You may want to, and it's fully logical for you to predict say within the next three months or within three months or six months or even a year of business operations you may not be gaining any profit because remember profit when we actually talk about like profit is um is where you actually all your costs is covered and the money you've paid yourself like you should you should be paying yourself a salary or whatever wage for your work on your company um, whatever that remains, that would be profit. Um, all the costs, once that's been paid for, that's profit. And a lot of times that you will find that for startup businesses, the first year it's all about because of the large amount of the investments put in to launch a business, like overheads, buying machineries, marketing costs, all these sort of things, you will find a lot of companies will be trying to break even within the first year and it, they will be doing pretty well if they can manage to break even in that first year so break even is where your cost your capital investment um your sales or whatever um you recover all your um cost investment um uh, debt or whatever like all i'm uh, not debt but like all your initial costs whatsoever you that's all you recover that what at that point um, 
is the break-even point and anything in addition or any additional sales on top of break-even point is your profit so um that's something we need to just i think please do consider when you actually fill out your um, um profit loss or um, even projection like for, of sales data sales sheets because i wouldn't expect anyone to be making large volumes of sell say first week in first month in so that first three months at least should be you should be almost like negative like in debt because you all you are on your balance sheet you will be buying new equipments buying new things buying new software so that's a sort of thing to take into um operating and startup capital and operating so think of startup as in like the capital is like machinery so well the overheads um buying the machines all these sort of things but operating is like how much like like your electricity your bills like electricity of operating those machines that would be your operational cost and anything to do with marketing that's your operational cost as well so if you actually throw so this is um on the financial aspects section in um within modules so what you do you just scroll down there's um some templates excel templates so if you can just go in and try to fill those in have a go at filling those in myself personally i hate anything to do with numbers and tables so i know, I know like i can normally like it takes me ages to try to fill them out but it's actually really straightforward make does make sense like um think about i mean go do some research how much um bank fees would you have to pay um like you know how much does it cost to start up a um to open a business account um and how much do they charge monthly fees and all these um insurance um of even if you're sole trading or um, working from home obviously from an insurance perspective you what you do is you calculate a rough percentage an estimated percentage say your house is 100% of 100% of your residence your house what percentage is used for your business activities what percentage is used as your studio is it just a garage is it your studio um bedroom is it 20% 30% are you using half of your house half of your family home to actually work on your business um it wouldn't be 100% if you're living there because at least if you're living there and if you're full on business operating that will still be only half of it so 50% of your house residential house so that's when you then just calculate um like how much um do you guys pay for your insurance um buildings insurance whatever and then work out the percentage in that in that sense um you may want to make sure that you are also covered from um i think third parties like so you're you actually doing the activity so with building insurance it's like if your machine explodes and burns down the house that will be covered um on the building's insurance but then you want to like get proper business like sole trader side like insurance where you if you injure yourself you are covered in that sense um figure out what sort of um we don't need specifics cuz at the end of the day you don't have 15 um 100 words but do consider all these elements and then in terms of word count use tables where you can use dot points where you can so that that's where there will be a lot of information um so these are all your cash flow um templates all that if you can just go in and have a look um again like based on last so um last submissions feedback trying to be specific um don't provide really vague so sort of generalized statements um like i will be you know i'll be making sales or i'm targeting um people who care about sustainability which is a great thing cuz i think most everyone's touched on like from an objective business mission perspective that you want to promote sustainability in fashion but if everyone's saying that what makes you different than anyone else um if it's your designs your particular aesthetics i think trying to use utilize visualization approaches um design a logo or if you have an existing logo already if you have an existing letterhead already make sure that's incorporated into this report so 
a particular design like um so use like visualization approaches to sort of convey to people that this is not just a, a boring business statement that there are obviously you don't like if it's like i oh, my business sells gothic style garments and everything's like in like black and then crazy paints and whatever it's like not that just really subtly like make sure they try to make it professional like have a logo have a letterhead whatever so i think trying to do that um you you do i think you can include some products um visuals of your products if you want if you have them already that's not required um what else is there so please do um um api referencing i didn't actually mark you guys down um like there isn't a section for apa referencing but i think you actually got marked down for communications a bit if you didn't include a um, reference list for your last section which is i know it is confusing on your behalf because michelle separated this whole report into part a and part b so a lot of you might think that only the next part will include all your references Please just be aware, any assessments you can do, you need to put in a reference list, okay? So don't forget that. Um, if you use any visuals, images, make sure just number them, label them, and then have a clear system, and then um, include the imagery um, reference list at the, at the end. Um, any questions? No. Hello. So quiet. <clears throat> Is it making sense? Do you all know what you're doing for the next step? Yes. Yep. So your assessment is due. Yes, thank you. Your assessment is due on the 25th. No, 22nd. 20, 20, 22nd, which is a Friday. So it will show that it's the 15th. But again, like you, you'll have your extensions applied.